Okay, so my cat is cute. Lang zeli feely sometimes. You know eh. Anyway. We have to have a discussion, okay? The level of disrespect that I have been endured under and continue to get endured under every single day of my life is astronomical. And so, if at all you live in a world full of disrespectful chunkies, you've got to be self-respecting. In theories of psychology, uh, of behavioral psychology, basically how you train a person how to be, theorists out here discovered that there are ways that you can condition human beings to do stuff thinking that they innovated it. They think that they came up with it first. They think that they're the ones that figured it out at first, but they weren't. It's written in God's word, Cran Cat Wang Boha, and you're distracting me. Wang Wang. Yeah, Blomada, Uska Mova, hey, I have a novel called Blomama Gulling, Blomama, Uska Guskacha, Scratcha Wang Gasset. Okay, where shall I commence? It's written in God's word that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of man or kings is to search it out. Let's say that again just because it's cool. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter and it is the glory, therefore, of kings or human beings to search it out. Therefore, every discovery that we've ever made as human beings has been our glory indeed. But guess what we have been searching out? That which God concealed. There is nothing we can ever find out that God has not concealed that we may find it out. Empirical study research, all different kinds of, um, you know, inquiry, curious inquiry by the human race uh, is the very thing that, according to God's word, we were supposed to do. So when we innovate successfully and we come up with solutions to stuff, frankly, we have walked in that which was destined for us to happen, to search out that which God hid. All knowledge goes right back to him at the very beginning. At the end of the day, everything literally reverts back to God. I I don't even understand why scientists, for instance, many of them, especially theoretical physicists, don't eventually recover themselves to the knowledge of the one true God, given how much they inquire of this earth and how much they find out as a result, because the evidence of God is so starkly across all of society that there is no ignorance. Take for instance, this here is for me like literally by far the biggest disregard by the human race of the evidence of God. The shape of the atom. The atom. The atom, you guys. So Ezekiel, in the book of Ezekiel, and I believe also Isaiah maybe, and then maybe perhaps John, essentially God's prophets, right? Described the shape of the atom and all that which goes on over there in the scriptures and yet scientists are in severe denial about it the omnipresence of god i believe is described in the shape of the atom there is this description of this uh the, this um living creature that has got an eye in the middle and it has got wheels all around that are always rotating and eyes all over and it's been drawn by many um artists in these streets and when you look at that living creature described by ezekiel and also I, I, there's other prophets that described it. Uh, the four living creatures that encircle the throne of God, one of them is described. <coughs> All right. It's called the Orphanim Angel. Okay. And it's, yeah, it is described. Okay, you guys, those who draw it, I would implore you to go and Google the Orphanim Angel, right? Or the angel described by Ezekiel. I can't stand barking dogs. I don't even know why dogs are allowed to be kept as pets. But anyway, whatever. That's another story for another day. Mm. Yeah, if you look at the shape of that drawing, of that description in the scriptures, right next to an atom as discovered by mankind under a microscope, <laughs> the similarities are earth shattering. They are goosebump creating. <laughs> and it's not just similarities in how they look, but it's also similarities in how, how they operate. <laughs> goodness guys the reason why an atom is always vibrating is because of the fact that it's got th these um is it protons or what right that are constantly just encircling it all day all night 24 hours a day yeah and this living creature that is described in the book of ezekiel looks just like the atom including the wheels that are always spinning all around all day all day the only thing that we don't see about the atom, though, are the eyes all over. The nucleus in the center is like that eye in the middle. 
The nucleus in the center is like that eye in the middle, described in the Ophanim Angel by Ezekiel. And then the protons that encircle the atom constantly all day long are like the wheels that encircle all around. Please, like, just go Google it. I even wrote an article in my blog about it, how it is that, hey, guys, like, the rudimentary building block of all matter has been described <laughs> in the book of Ezekiel and scientists are unprepared to admit it. They are unprepared to admit I wrote a whole article on this in my blog, speaking about why even it is that the entertainment industry or ancient egypt worship this one eye symbolism it is the work of romans one god have mercy yo like <laughs> as in guys disrespect like i'm not like you know the bible says the invisible qualities of god are all over creation that you might be without excuse god it is his glory to conceal a matter and the glory of man is to search it out man searches stuff out and then they still somehow are blind and don't see god the lord speaks to his disciples in parables okay so those of us who are of him will see these things while everybody else will be completely blinded to it however the day's gonna come when you're gonna wake up and realize that oh snap but like god showed me it was so obvious under a microscope i saw it i saw it I saw it, but I decided that I am going to worship the creation instead of the creator. Okay, so where shall we go? Gentiles guilty before God. Romans 1 from 18. Romans 1 from 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Are you listening to this? Like men hold the truth, but in unrighteousness. So you can't deal. You can't handle the truth. Like Papa, we keep on innovating all of these things, including the saying, we, you can't handle the truth. But guess who said it first? Us. You know how I said earlier, one of these days, these boots are going to walk all over you. The whole prospect, um, the whole theory or the whole concept of a doormat was already described in the scriptures. Like the whole thing of telling a person, lay yourself prostrate on the floor that we might walk all over you. Even that lyric from that song. Yeah, it was in the Bible first. Glory of God to conceal a matter, glory of man to search it out. One of these days, these boots are gonna walk all over you. And then you can't handle the truth, how we love to use that as a quote. Um, except here it is that it is like chilling in Romans 118. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of man is to search it out. Your biggest and baddest quotes in these streets are from these scriptures. I bet a lot of y'all don't even know. Why under heaven you keep on calling doubtful people Thomas? That's the Bible. Thomas was the dude that did not believe that Christ was resurrected until he saw the hands and the holes of the Son of Man. And then Christ said to him, you believe because you have seen, but blessed is the man that believes and yet has not seen. Doubting Thomas is from the Bible. The terminology olive branch is from the Bible. <laughs> Y'all, um, it like, yeah, your creators everywhere. No other religious text is that frequently quoted with that many scriptures. Uh, basically being used for day-to-day -day life however with people being unprepared to acknowledge the truth like you reap what you sow that saying that 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 scripture if you type it into google so many things will come up rather like in instead of so many search results will pop up that are secular right next to the scriptural quotations you you have to literally say you will know they're not you will know them by their fruit but what do you call this you reap what you sow bible so that you can get the scripture from the Bible because so many secular places quote that you reap what you sow you reap what you sow they come from the scriptures and if at all everything commences with Christ God conceals matters and it is for us to search it out it is only he who or she who humbles themselves to him that will be given this knowledge it's written in God's word that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One brings understanding. It is also written in God's word that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Okay? And, and, that, and because of the fact that they have not loved knowledge, God is going to cut their churn off from the land. That's I, I, Hosea, is it 4, 8, I believe, going on 9. Okay? Uh, God makes it clear that he blinds, makes daft, essentially unable to see the minds of uh, uh, those who are rebellious to his cause. The God of this world blinds the minds of unbelievers as God will give him permission to do so. But God also speaks to his servants in parables. He lets us see in crystal clarity that which everybody else is confounded concerning. So, I mean, of course, you're going to think that the things of God, as it is written in God's word as well, are foolishness to the man that is perishing. The things of God are foolishness to the man who is perishing. So, the bizarre mistreatment of a Christian, even though his, his, it has been prophesied, and it is obviously bizarre, it's strange, it's weird. People don't see that they're mindless drones literally being made to fulfill God's prophecy. 
<laughs> it's written in God's word that he has set apart everything for its purposes, including the wicked for the day of trouble. When you are walking in a group thing, mindless drones, just oh, grunting, uh, uh, doing something that is obviously wrong in an observable capacity, can be studied under a microscope with you gathering insights that are observable. Mm. When you are gawking at that level of provability of a person's innocence and you ignore it. Oh my goodness, do you not see that you're the wicked set apart for the day of trouble? Do you not see that God has handed you over, like I'm about to read right now in Romans 1, to some kind of a debased state, like you literally cannot comprehend. Though you read, you cannot comprehend. Though you learn, you never arrive at a knowledge of truth. Though you study, you never actually really truly find anything out. Anything. So I'm still busy talking about the atom, but let's read over here, right? Um, in Romans uh, 118. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth that you know in unrighteousness, just like the people who knew the truth of my innocence held that truth in unrighteousness and got me to lose a job anyway. And now I'm unemployed, I'm poverty stricken, and people feel entitled to me in a most disrespectful capacity. And I'm like, I said no though. I said no, and people are talking about me like uh, it's only a matter of time. She'll eventually capitulate. Mm. <sighs> Whoa. Yes, like it, but yeah, man. Yes, in the full parents of God is admirable. It's awe inspiring because I, it, like, it shows you just how God he is due to the fact that literally I would never take that rubbish in my stride. What God takes every day, Shem, y'all better be glad I ain't God. I would have literally bombed Gauf Alona. I would have literally Disrespect. Yeah, thank God. Thank God we are not gods. Thank God as human beings we are restricted by a God who can stay his hand from finishing rubbish off. For the sake of giving them mercy. Ahem. <laughs> I'm grateful for the things I want to because now if I got this disrespected, guess what? Zebe, mudim, kesho, kesho that I would have killed by now. Give me chalen na kibulay. That's what you need to understand. Kitu swa kibuza lwa na horre keska tu kamulo. But then again, it is the very Christianity that I have in my bones coursing through them like hemoglobin, blood, mm, like plasma that basically put me in this position in the first place. Because when you give your life to Christ, <laughs> proof that he is God is in how bizarre, <laughs> bizarre the world will treat you. Bizarrely, how the world will be towards you. It'll literally be taboo with them having no respect for the fact that, like, are you serious, though? Are you serious? Like, wake up. Like, you're in a coma, a trance, an energy, you're mesmerized, dude, you're under. Hypnosis, something. Papa. Because until we are thanking your goblin, mm, but no, they don't see. Because the hearing ear and the seeing eye both are from the Lord. If the Lord has made out of you a zombie, sham, woe to you. If God has made out of you a debased mind, sham, woe to you. Woe to you. Woe to you. I'm sorry. All I can say is hi, everybody. Because literally, common sense, I is all register. Basic things, I is all register. 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 Because you have taken the truth in unrighteousness. Because you've not loved the truth, have taken pleasure in unrighteousness like it's written in 2 Thessalonians 2. So you're just, you're not going to get basic stuff, y'all. Basic things. Like the world comes to an end because of that mindless drone psychosis, like a frenzy, a trance. The fatula fella because of that. Yo, guys, I'm going to go to 1997. I can't. But it doesn't matter that I can't because God, right? When I'm weak, he's strong. Amen. Let's just read. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shown it to them. <laughs> for the invisible uh, things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen like the orphanine, like the atom, like the four, the, the, like one of the living creatures that looks exactly like that. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So they're without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. 
and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. Listen to that. And to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness. Like, right? So this is what happens when you worship creation instead of the creator, right? God hands you over. Yeah. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness uh, through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Mm -mm -mm. And likewise also men leaving the natural use of women burned in their lust toward one another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat and even as they did not like to retain god in their knowledge god gave them over there it is again to a reprobate mind to do the things which are not convenient other translations say to do the things which ought not be done <laughs> being filled with all unrighteousness fornication wickedness covetousness maliciousness full of envy murder debate deceit malignity whisperers backbiters haters of god despiteful proud boasters inventors of evil things disobedient to parents without understanding covenant breakers without natural affection implacable and merciful who knowing the judgment of god that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them that's what romans 1 has to say right the lab part of it from 18 all the way up until 32. romans 1 basically describes why under heaven it is that you don't believe in the existence of god despite being a whole scientist a scientist that has all this evidence it is the glory of god to conceal everything and it is your glory as a scientist to search it out you find out and the invisible qualities of god all over creation it all commences in the bible and you still deny the truth never mind being a scientist but anything else at all just the invisible qualities of god now let's go back to talking about the atom not only does it look like the orphan meme angel, but if you look at our Milky Way galaxy, looks like the atom. But does it really look like the atom? No, it doesn't look like the atom. It looks like that described living creature in the Bible. I like to say that the structure of the atom is God's favorite shape because through it, he created all things. Everything that has been created has been created with the basic foundational principles of all matter, which is the atom. It's indivisible. The atom, guys, is the building block of everything, living and inanimate. The atom is the foundation of every element on the periodic table. The atom has been described in the book of Ezekiel in that living creature. And we, only years down the line, found it under a microscope. And then once we could look into outer space and take photographs there and gauge our solar system, we then came to learn that our galaxy, that is the Milky Way also, <laughs> looks like an atom. Oh, guys, like, it's like literally, it's all over creation. So basically, the atom, which is the rudimentary building block of all matter, is the thing that human beings now worship on Earth. Isn't it? Isn't it? Why? Because it is the building block of creation. It is the worship of the creation instead of the creator. That little eye in the center of the orphanim angel. Let's talk about fallen angels ever so briefly. Okay. They were created different, the same, etc. at the time then when God created them. There are different kinds of angels, all right? Some angels manifest in human form because we'd be freaked out if at all they manifest in some of the ways in which they've been described in the scriptures the ones that spoke to sarah and abraham in telling them that they're gonna have a baby um were in human form the ones that often appear appeared to saints in the bible were in human form the bible also says you entertain angels unawares so you must always sometimes you might be entertaining angels unaware so you must always be hospitable to strangers so we know that it is possible for a human being looking person to be an actual angel but we know as well, according to the scriptures, God is understanding that way. He knows that if we, if we were to see certain angels, um, we'd freak out. <laughs> we'd freak out because they're scary, okay? They're very scary. We know as it is described across the scriptures, in book of Ezekiel, Isaiah, uh, what do you call this? Revelation. There are angels that are so scary to look at. The four living creatures around the throne of God. It's like, don't nobody want to happen upon that on the streets, okay? Yeah. 
Some of them have got faces of lions, of uh, birds, um, faces of people, teeth of human beings, hair of people. They have got bodies of human beings, wings. Um, they've got bodies of lions, beasts, but faces of men like Papa. The scriptures have described multiple types of angels in the, the word. And the ones that were described largely were holy, are holy. The, 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 the description of all of these angels have been holy angels. They're not fallen, so they are holy, even though they, they would be wholesomely scary to us. We can therefore necessarily reverse engineer from that point that out of the third of heaven's legions that fell must be some angels that looked like what's been described in the scriptures. Some having heads of lions and bodies of people and teeth of human beings and hair of people and um, faces of birds, etc. God created them like that, some of them looking like humans as well. So out of the third of heaven's legions, there were likely also those that looked very, very scary. And we know that that's a thing as well. Why? Because in the book of God, in Revelation, we know in, I believe, Revelation 9, <laughs> bottomless pit when it gets opened, Abaddon, the menacing creatures that come out of there are obviously fallen angels. And well, they've got stings of scorpions and faces of lions and people and whatnot, hair, teeth, like they, yeah, they are described in um, a menacing capacity, they look like locusts alongside beasts and they fly out and yeah, you can go and google on the internet machine what these, uh, th those who have artistically drawn them, what they look like. Scary, right? Yeah, but I believe that they are essentially corruptible versions of what would be an incorruptible angel, ones that did not fall, right? Angels that did not fall, with right alongside angels that did fall, I believe they look similar. I believe they look similar. For instance, why do I believe they look similar? Look at Jesus, right? Christ lived among us as a human being. And then he got translated over. Basically, he got an incorruptible body. He's presently roaming around with an incorruptible body. There are holes in his hands, but he doesn't bleed. It's written in God's word that life is in the blood. So if at all you extract blood out of a human body, then they can lose life. So Christ can't die. He's incorruptible forever. So I don't believe the incorruptible body that we're going to have in eternity has blood because life is in the blood. We, we basically are going to be made incapable of bleeding out, just like Christ. He's got holes in a place where he could um, get exsanguinated, and yet he's walking around with holes in his hands. Thomas, the account, we know that's like a whole thing, right? Mm, cool. Christ can walk through walls. That's how uh, amazing his body now is, etc. It's written in God's word, and I believe um, 1 Corinthians 13, that we see things dimly, but then the day's going to come when we see Christ as he is. He says that I go to prepare a play. Uh, again, that, that's in 1 Corinthians 13, and then in, this, in the Gospels, it is written that God goes and prepares a place for us, um, and then he's going to come back and receive us to, to, to himself, so that way he is that we may be there also, but we can't be there unless we have been translated over. Nobody can see God um, unless they are Jesus or completely holy. No one has, can see God and live, right? So seeing as we're going to have eternal life, um, we are going to one day be able to see God. It's written in the scriptures that the dwelling place of God is now with man. So in order for us to live forever, we have to be in, in, uh, incapable of dying. All right. So I don't believe that our incorruptible bodies are going to have blood coursing through the veins because we, we won't have an ability to be stabbed to death. All right. Christ was a perfect sacrifice. He spilled the blood and now he has substituted for us with his blood uh, type establishment thing. But Jesus, even though he is this whole amazing incorruptible being now, whereas before he could be killed, now he can't anymore. He still looks pretty much human. Uh, we know from the accounts in the scriptures that they recognized him as he was walking around, uh, meaning that he was not significantly or fundamentally changed in his um, um, uh, morphology, in, in his form. Uh, he it, it was maintained. Uh, his um, ontological makeup was largely the same. Probably, however, the only thing that changed was the cellular structure. But ontologically, he just stayed more or less the same form. Um, we are made in the image of God, and that image of God is pretty much what it is that you're looking at right now. A human being with two eyes, ears, um, yeah, you give him a point, a, a walking legs, and what have you. Christ look, looked like Christ, but he had superpowers. He had superpowers. He looked like Christ, but he had superpowers. Ten amount of what would be superpowers, okay? But he looked like, it looked like himself. An incorruptible version that could not die and could not age and had superpowers. That was Jesus, all right? If this superpower being walking around looks like us, but it's better than us in the worst way, okay? It doesn't die, it doesn't scratch, it does not age, it does not get gray hairs, it does not bleed out, and it can walk through walls. It can, you get my point? Um, we can necessarily infer that corrupted angels, fallen angels look just like holy ones just able to die 
just able to bleed out or whatever would be the tenement of that equivalent spiritually just able to essentially experience what would be um the ability to burn for all of eternity bodies have got to be um adjusted for the second death right now if we get burned to a crisp necklace as like in the days of a birthday d we perish but in eternity people can't perish they have to be there forever burning and burning and burning the smoke of their torment must rise up forever and in that place they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for all of eternity it is the same people but they they're given a body that is corrupted beyond what it is that we are enduring corruption uh, we are fallen right but our bodies are far better than what would be the tenement of people's bodies in sheol in hell because people's bodies in sheol and hell are more menacing than this but likely still the same image why more menacing because they have to be able to just kind of stay alive even though they are being killed that's why it's called the second death just keep dying for all of eternity right um but before people are thrown in the lake of fire that is the second death they live in this corruptible body with an opportunity to inherit eternal life but then reject it and then go there so the fallen angels that are currently roaming the earth or able to cause mischief likely are like human beings in this present state that we are in right now and that we can die um and however we are enabled to sort of kind of live in this plane looking like what was originally created i don't think we look that different from the original adam and eve just that our makeup is such that now we can die and similarly too we don't look any different from jesus only difference is that we don't have superpowers and we're not incorruptible but you're gonna recognize me when i have my incorruptible body you're also going to uh uh however there will be a retraction of aging all that stuff what a fish face so fallen angels that's what i'm getting at fallen angels likely look like holy angels still and they are yet to inherit their comprehensively corrupted bodies that cannot get that cannot get consumed the fire does not consume as written in about, about the lake of fire uh I, they, I believe they're about to, they're about to inherit their comprehensively corruptible bodies only after being judged at the great white throne judgment they if they're condemned already all right but it's written in god's word that we are going to judge the um, angels we're going to judge the world with jesus we're going to judge the world with jesus and we are also going to judge angels so at the final judgment of these angels they're then going to likely be given an, a corruptible body a, a further than already corrupted in order that they might be able to endure eternal condemnation all right which right now i don't think they presently can there's literally nobody in the lake of fire right now the antichrist and the false prophet are going to be thrown in there first and i believe that the throwing of the antichrist and the false prophet is going to be like a a, a situation like the rapture like as with the twinkling of an eye we get caught up in the sky and the dead in christ rise first i believe the antichrist and the false prophet are going to have a reverse rapture where it is that they also are going to get instead of incorruptible bodies corruptible bodies so they can be thrown first in the lake of fire to burn and burn and burn the second death okay very well so having stated that then it must necessarily also be true that these fallen angels look pretty much like like i said holy angels so out of all of those that fell out of heaven must necessarily then be it has to be one of the angels that fell or many of the angels that fell definitely were an orphanim and the reason why i say that an orphanim is the one described with the, the living creature with the wheels all around the reason i say that is because ancient egypt innovated this one eye symbolism religion that they like have funneled down and the entertainment industry is all about that business now and if you look at hieroglyphics in ancient egypt they draw their gods on walls and some of them look they've got beaked faces it's bodies of people with beaked faces bodies of animals with faces of humans you you will know like just google egyptian hieroglyphics and you will see that these people drew their gods on walls what i believe that was was is um can you them basically drawing what they saw visitations pagan society as your hating god will of course have fallen angels to show themselves to them as god fallen angels just like their daddy satan have always wanted to be worshipped so they showed themselves to the egyptians and then they drew them they drew them so you'll be thinking that these people are superstitious or paranoid but no they were not superstitious neither neither paranoid they actually saw them and they drew them and then their main worship thing is horus the eye of horus what is with the triangle uh and what uh, what is with the the triangle right so <laughs> the things of hell or the kingdom of darkness are always an a perverted version of the things of heaven all right so the wheels all around that um living creature described in god's word 
in the kingdom of darkness instead of it being like a sphere the circle of life it would then be a triangle instead of a sphere it would be a triangle okay so we see described in the what do you call this thing by bizang this thing that they do this one eye symbolism it is this triangle and in the center of it is just this weird little eye and you wonder but like what is with the eye what is with the eye and if you look at the living creature in the word of god in the book of ezekiel there is it has like a big fat giant eye in the center it has a big fat giant eye in the center and instead of respecting the spherical structure because the devil is always warping that which is satanic he uses a uh, basically half a circle which is a triangle if you were to add up all the corners of a triangle or to put it in a straight line it makes up 180 degrees but a circle a full circle which is basically the eternal nature of god um is is 360 degrees but of course a triangle eventually becomes a straight line which is only 180 degrees so only basically half of the truth is what it is that you're getting out your industry so instead of it being a circle and an eye in the center it is a triangle and an eye in the center but that eye in the center that you are walking at is thoroughly for the life of you the eye that is in the center of the orphanim it is what, what, what fallen angel has got just one blinking eye in the center the orphanim well it's not, fall, not all of them are fallen but you get my point the orphanim angel is the only described a uh, living creature in the scriptures that has got one eye in the center and it just so happens to also be the basic rudimentary shape of an atom the orphanim angel drawn right next to an atom is the two of them next to each other are indistingu- indistinguishable from each other literally an atom and the living creature described are indistinguishable from each other and that shape is found all over creation and if an atom is this indivisible thing that makes up all matter so basically all things which have been created have everything that exists the rudimentary building blocks of it is an atom do you not see that that is an implication of the worship of creation rather than the creator top of that who is the creator jesus it's written in first john In John 1, sorry, that in the beginning was the word and the word was, was with God and the word was God. 1 John, 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 John. Not 1 John, not just not 1, not 1 John, just John. I actually want to read it. All right. Ish, now I need to use the bathroom. John, 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 John. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Um literally there's not enough days in the week or I was in the day to explain all the stuff. In the beginning was the word and the word uh, 1 John it is written In the beginning, not one John, just John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word, John one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Listen to this: All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Okay, that's all that I'm going to read up to, right? So nothing has ever been made apart from Jesus Christ. The Word was God. The Word who is flesh that dwelt among us is Jesus. Did like in fourteen. It is written, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. So Christ is the Word, and He's the one that made all things, and all matter, the rudimentary building blocks of all matter, is the atom, and it is indivisible. Nothing else. You can't cut it in half. You can't separate the new, the nucleus from the protons and the new. You can't. An atom is indivisible, and it is the rudimentary building blocks of all creation. matter as we know it is made through atoms the atom of which was described as the main big fat chunky shape the, that that we see in the book of ezekiel the four living one of the four living creatures those wheels all around years down the line human beings come up with microscopes they find out what the atom looks like the, the rudimentary building blocks of all of society all elements in the periodic table foundational rudimentary indivisible building block is an atom so basically this atom is what Christ made everything with and then human beings and then God describes it as basically being like he he makes an angel that is shaped like an atom this atom of which has got eyes all around okay that's what's good and then human beings years down the line go and worship basically anything carved graven images dustbins cats dogs uh poles cars uh homes toilet paper keys um jobs breath other people bibles instead of the the word that becomes flesh and dwells among us people go and they worship cups water rain um yeah all these things made with atoms breath that you can't see again 
the invisible quality, like the scriptures make it here, Romans 1. These are the God's invisible properties. First and foremost, the scriptures, it is written therein that God is spirit and those who worship him worship him in spirit and in truth. It is also written in God's word that the Holy Spirit's work is like that of the wind, right? You see its effects when he's busy speaking to Nicodemus Jesus. You see the effects of the wind um, even though you don't see it. It's invisible, right? Yet human beings believe in wind because they can see that the, that the trees are blowing. And human beings believe in atoms because they discovered them under a microscope, but you can't see them with your naked eye. And yet, and yet, you can't see atoms with your naked eye. So they, they okay, so human beings believe in the wind because you see its effects, the trees are blowing. Human beings believe in atoms because they found them under a microscope. You believe in microorganisms because you found them under a microscope. You believe in breath because you inhale and exhale and therefore survive. You believe in oxy oxygen, all stuff of which is made of rudimentary building blocks of matter called atoms. And these are also invisible. And you did not see them before you discovered them under a microscope, right? You did not see them until you discovered them under a microscope. Otherwise, so basically, in long story short, you could have actually totally not believed in the atom until you discovered it, right? That's what's good. Mm. The scriptures in Romans 1 make it clear that these are invisible qualities. God said invisible qualities. An atom is invisible unless you see it under a microscope. God is invisible. Like the wind, he describes himself in the scriptures. To Nicodemus, he says it's like the wind and you see its effect, the work of the Holy Spirit, right? And yet people don't want to believe in God, even though they have proven the existence of other things that are naked eye visible. Things that they can see with the naked eye that, sorry, things that they can't see with the naked eye, but that they have proven exist because of technology and the advancements have confirmed the existence of these things. Here it is that God is invisible. He is spirit and those who worship him are in spirit. Worship him in spirit and in truth. God is invisible. And he said himself in Romans 1 that the invisible qualities of God are all over creation. Yes, including things like atoms and wind, including the fact that he described them through Ezekiel and so many other things in the scriptures. But human beings don't want to believe in Jesus. There are, Jesus of which what, lived, provably, provably. Like there, there's no one that can refute the birth of Christ unless they choose ignorance, etc. Right? Jesus totally did actually live. But if we were going to go to eternity past now or prior to Christ, right? Before Christ, BC, before Jesus was born, all we had to run with was basically faith. Faith. If you have faith in wind, you have no excuse to, have, to not have faith in God. Do you understand? If you have faith in oxygen, you have no excuse to not have faith in God. If you have faith in the fact that you will keep on breathing while you sleep at night, you have no excuse to not have faith in God. If you have faith in the fact that your baby in your belly is going to grow to term, even though it can't breathe for itself, you ought have faith in Christ. His invisible qualities are all over creation. Something is keeping this place buoyant. Something is keeping this earth going. And the invisibility, the, the discovery of invisible things as visible ought therefore then lend human beings over to the recognition that God must necessarily exist, especially considering he described the very rudimentary building blocks of all matter in the person of Ezekiel before anybody could even know that that's what we all and what all things animate and inanimate are made of. The atom. But you see, the thing about the atom that really gets me, or rather, let me not say the atom, let me rather say the invisible, the, the living creature that was described in the book of Ezekiel that looks like the galaxy, the Milky Way, and also um, that, that looks like the atom and the galaxy, the Milky Way. Yeah, the thing that gets to me is the fact that it has eyes all over and an eye in the center. Christ made all things through this foundational rudimentary building block that is the atom. And he described in the book of Ezekiel a living creature that looks exactly like an atom and it has got eyes all around. I went on right ahead in that article that I wrote in my blog to say this is very potentially the omnipresence of God. This is potentially how it is that God sees everything all at the same time. Look, we can't explain the mysteries of God. They're enigmatic. Do you understand? Not everything. His thoughts are not ours and his ways are not ours. But with what we have, we can speculate. And I am speculating that the omnipresence of God is likely in the atom. Because according to Ezekiel's description of that living creature, it has eyes all around. And if everything, even the teeth, on your, um, in your mouth and every last hair strand on your head hey, is written in God's word does not fall down without your heavenly father knowing it. Hey, not a single hair on your head will perish. How? How is that achieved? Maybe it's something enigmatic, enigmatic, sorry, that we don't understand. But it could also potentially be something that we can understand in that it is all made up of atoms that then make up elements, which then make up compounds, which, which then make up complex living organisms. <sighs> which then make up basically just God's eyes in your body, out of your body, in your blood, everywhere. If everything in matter is made up of atoms and these things have got eyes all over, like that living creature described in, the, in Ezekiel having eyes all over, it means God's eyes are in 
<laughs> it's scary. It should scare people to sin. They're everywhere. If this here theory, the speculation is accurate, it means that the very building blocks of your personhood, the car that you drive, this tissue, this Bible, everything is is looking. It's looking. It's looking. My 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 camera right now that is recording this video is not only looking at me because I pressed record, but by mere virtue of being matter, part of matter, it's looking. Everything. That's why. The Bible says in Romans 8 that creation groans. Groans to see the sons of God revealed. Because if creation is made up of atoms, and atoms have eyes all around, it sees the indiscretion of humanity all the time, and groans because creation honors God in a way that human beings just don't. Shoo. He is all over, all around us. Okay, I just used the bathroom, that's why I'm huffing and puffing. God is all over, all around us. That ought give people involved in dark arts, sorcery, magic, <laughs> goosebumps and itchy scalps or whatever. It ought cause a severity of disquiet in you who never mind fornicate and swear and lie. But you who partake in satanic rituals against the body of Christ. Like, you should be afraid. You should be very afraid. Granted that God is literally all over creation. Granted that the Lord is all over creation as I believe is described by that living creature and how it is that it is so ubiquitously found all across the... all across the, the, the world. Y'all, there is something telling of the evidence of God all over and yet people are comprehensively disregarding and so when a person is given insight and knowledge into the filth and the darkness that people are participating in and then you go and you call them a psychic, a medium you go and you call them crazy like uh, suffering from a severity of mental illness when you go and you call somebody that God has gives understanding concerning behavior that is satanic in the streets and because you have been caught with your hands in the cookie jar then call them isaikigi or e whatever listen god is omnipresent god is omniscient god has eyes all over you can go into the depths of the earth and he is there you can go into the heights he is there there is nowhere where god isn't and when he then uses his servant to open people's eyes to his omnipresence because he sees your satanic rituals this this individual and call her a psychic or a fortune teller <laughs> the devil is the one that steals the gifts of god's people or rather the devil is the one that steals people who have been given a spiritual gifting and then says to them use it for my kingdom satan cannot be everywhere at the same time like god omniscient and omnipresent however he can be in more places in one day than the regular man in the street coupled with the fact that he's a spirit and an ancient spirit that is eternity future eternal but not past he, he, he has a he has a starting point he has a beginning he has been created but he uh will not expire he will not pass away he will go he will go into the lake of fire um and spend the rest of his eternal state there but he definitely has a beginning whereas christ was around in the beginning in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god all right he was always there from the very beginning he's the alpha the omega the beginning and the end that is jesus but satan has a beginning and he will have no end we all have a beginning but we have no end we all have a beginning but we have no end so it's basically evidence of the fact that satan is just like you only that you are made a little lower than the angels so he has a little bit more power than you but you are literally worshiping the creation satan's um structure what do you call this like um physiological structure is also likely atomic his physiological structure is also likely very very highly likely atomic in the sense that just like we are carbon compounds or carbon forms it is probably likely true that satan too is a carbon compound no what is this a carbon life form sorry why i say that is because christ is a carbon life form and when he was born here he was born as a human being to live among us as a human being and he was therefore a carbon life form so if god himself in whose image we are made is a carbon life a life form in the person of jesus christ it is likely true as well that satan also is a carbon life form carbon of which is a an element on the periodic table and then its many permutations then become elemental what is this compound they become compounds 
meaning that Satan is a complex organism just like you, just like me, a complex living organism just like you, a multicellular complex organism just like you, and just like me, just like Jesus, however corruptible, however fallen, however, look there are things that we can never identify or discover in this plane on earth but we can speculate like i said it is the glory of man it is the glory of god to conceal a matter but it is the glory of man to search it out here it is that man has searched out the building blocks of all things and we can literally trace it all the way back to the scriptures and yet people are still doing seances people are still with limited understanding as to the prophetic the prophetic utterances of those that god has given a prophetic gifting when you disrespect a person from here to Timbuktu and are attempting with every bone in your body to make a child of God do that which a child of God will never capitulate to doing you are disrespecting the fact that God is everywhere omnipresent and is able to therefore protect his daughter from the insanity of those but in 1997 and to think that to think that you can harass his daughter for long enough to eventually get to a point where she will finally be tired of suffering and then do what you want her to do. And yet you're insistent. Look, I don't have a job. I'm trying to get one. I'm trying to make it true that I have a job. By the time I share this content, I have to have a job. But the way that I am being harassed by those who do dark arts because they're father the devil, even though people are not omniscient, Satan is aware that I don't have a job. And so because Satan is aware that I do not have a job, he is keeping his servants very busy with me, with insistences because the devil, we as Christians walk by faith and not by sight. Do you understand? So we hope upon something that is going to come. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We hope for a job to successfully come in the way. By faith, we wait for it. But Satan is this rando into instant gratification. So because he's into instant gratification and he makes people lean on instant gratification, he gets his disciples to harass the one who is in faith waiting on God for that which will come into their lap in a delayed fashion. In the sense that it's going to come five days later instead of just today. So he tries to get Christians to essentially jump off a precipice before they can finally, having trusted God, get what it is that they trusted God for. So Gadelwa. Because I'm only going to share this content once I've got a job. And the devil knows I don't have one. And he's busy causing his minions to harass me knowing that faith not by sight. So God was going to get tired of, of all the sorrow. Just lambasted with a lot of witchcraft. And then she will basically capitulate before she gets that which pretty much God made it clear to her. This is how it is that this is going to unfold. I told you guys that I have to get a job to be safe until the rapture happens. And the Lord has made it clear to me that I'm going to be set free. We cannot be trusting social media, etc. I'm going to get a 9 to 5. Just not through this family member that I've been talking about because I am Tim. I don't trust her. She's going to surveil the living grass out of me. But the disrespect that I keep on getting through witchcraft. It's like Labantu are aware that I don't have a job yet. But they can't know. They don't know. They're just going out on a limb because their father, the devil, who has possessed their bodies through demons, keeps on telling them, keeps scratching at somebody's eyeballs out. Earlier I was <laughs> earlier I was speaking about operant conditioning. I was speaking about basically theories of psychology. Okay? I was speaking about theories of psychology and how it is that, you know, like I said, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of man is to search it out. And the glory of man or the glory of kings is to search out that matter. So basically, we gain a lot out of uh, discovering stuff. And I spoke about how psychologists are like these theists that are misguided. Do you understand? They only give you half of the story and not the full one. Remember with the orphanim and the one eye symbolism that we see all over the entertainment industry that they lend over from Egypt? The, 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 the worship of the eye of Horus and whatnot. How it is that it's always inside a circle instead of, not a circle, but a triangle. Instead of a circle, halfway there, instead of the whole full truth type thing the orphanim angel has rings all around the atom is rings all around the invisible qualities of god all over creation rings all around the solar system rings all around but it's half-hearted it's the five seconds to truth with satan he will only give you that which is enough to make you feel like something is true but it not be comprehensively true the devil will only do half-hearted a job or three quarters in but not finish so the triangle is evidence of that 
instead of it being a circle it could the eye of horus could have totally been encircled in a circle because that's what an orphanim angel truly looks like but instead they chose a triangle which only equates amounts if you add it all up together to 180 degrees instead of 360 half so basically human beings only interrogate half of what they need to interrogate and they don't go all the way to the end they don't do the full circle only half and that's the kind of thing there is a way that seems right to a man but in the end it leads to destruction the field of psychology is literally like the worship of horas it is as half-hearted you recognize that there is an end that there is something special about that shape you recognize that there is something special about the orphanine the atom but you you don't finish the inquiry you don't go all the way to the end the bible says seek and you will find knock and the door will be open to you those who only do a half-hearted study don't get the truth god is a reward of those who diligently seek him do you understand what i'm saying so if you don't finish the journey of seeking god out you will only end at freud's theory of the psyche you will only end at maslow's hierarchy of need needs you will only end in theories of motivation. You will only finish at classical and operant conditioning. Pavlov's dogs. You will finish halfway to explain human behavior, the intricacies of it. And that half-hearted study of yours is, like I said, half-truth. It is not a lie. So even how it is that teaching or training, why it is that social conditioning is so successful, why subliminal messaging is so successful to influence the minds of human beings is because it is a method of training from God, but without finishing the journey. These theories of psychology, these psychological concepts were discovered. The theory, sorry, can you, the, the, the glory of God is to conceal a matter and the, and the glory of man is to search it out. So how it is that children get trained to us on um, mnemonic cues how it is that we get retrained behavior has historically always been the same principles it's just that some people pinned it do you understand right now i'm not speaking about classical conditioning which is uh ivan pavlov with his dogs but operant conditioning negative reinforcement and positive reinforcement essentially reward and punishment a system of reward and punishment has been in existence for a very long time it's just that it got at some point pinned down in psychology uh, and given a name operant conditioning still to this day we are being conditioned either classically or via operant conditioning and the system of rewards and punishment is unfortunately unfair it's written in god's word that god hates unequal skills that he hates the condemnation of the righteous and the acquittal of the wicked so basically if you reward wickedness he hates that and if you punish righteousness he hates it because he is aware of the influencing into a, a certain behavior power of operant conditioning because he created it god is the be all and end all of operant conditioning trainer he is the one that trains be he believers sanctification the process of growing in grace from strength to strength in christ by the holy spirit is literally through either classical or operant conditioning we get retrained behavior we are taught what to like and what not to like because of a system that god employs of rewards and punishment the lord rewards good behavior he is a rewarder of those who diligently diligently seek him but it is also written in his word that he will not leave any sin unpunished so essentially god punishes evil and he rewards righteousness something that the world has discovered can build behavior this operant conditioning but they have flipped it, flipped it upside down the world hates disciples so they train planetarians earthlings all over the show on the left and on the right to hate us by either classical conditioning that's another story for another day i've already explained how the pavlovian model of conditioning behavior into people gets used in instances for instance uh of like gender-based violence women who just chill in like trauma bonding or all these like psychological principles or what do they call this um anxious ambivalent attachment styles in relationships 